Hello and welcome to Crucible of Words for yet more dedicated legacy action. Today we are playing Hammer Time. This is a deck that's basically a modern deck that people have ported into Legacy and it's sort of picking up a bit of steam and I've played it on the channel a few times before. The versions I've played before were a little bit slow with things like Mother of Runes in them, but what we're trying today is something a little bit more explosive. So the main aim of the deck is to avoid the 8 mana equip cost of Colossus Hammer by either having a Pure Steel Paladin or a Sigarda's Aid. Both of these allow you to effectively equip the equipment one of them has to be coming into play to equip, the other one is just while it's on the board you can equip it. So that's sort of the plan to stick a Colossus Hammer on ideally an Esper Sentinel so it makes them have to pay huge amounts of the tax and just crash through really early and do lots of damage. Now the backup plan was always Stoneforge Mystic with something like Cauldra or Sword of Fire and Ice in a lot of situations is very good. And some of the lists were running Nettlesist which I didn't really get on with but I see why they were running it. What I've done is I've tried to speed this up and have more payoffs because I didn't really like the amount of payoffs I had in the deck before. So sometimes you were struggling to find creatures, sometimes you were struggling to find payoffs and it just felt a bit hard to keep it all together. I even thought about adding blue for Brainstorm just so you could fix your hand. However, then I was reminded of this little card. Michiko's Reign of Truth. So what this does is for two turns in a row you get to give a creature you control plus one plus one until end of turn for each artifact or enchantment artifact and or enchantment you control so it's basically like equipping something with a nettle cyst for a turn but what happens after that is it flips into a creature that has this on all the time anyway so it's a bit like um getting two pumps off and then having an urza saga token on the back end and as we all know urza saga tokens pretty good this is an urza saga token that also counts your cigar's aid so this seems pretty nice as an addition. It's only two mana, and it gives us another threat that we can play around Chalice of the Void. So to also empower this and speed us up a little bit, we've increased our zero drops. Now, obviously, Memnite is not exactly a stellar card, but with this setup, we should be able to activate Mox Opals on turn one often, which means that we can have more plays so we can do some of our more broken things, whether that's getting down a turn one Stoneforge or setting up our combo to start bashing on turn 2, or even just getting something like a Mishiko. Like, the backup plan of Stoneforge, Cauldra, and Sword of Fire and Ice is still quite nice, and we've got the mana to do that. Uh, we do have a lot of lands compared to some of these lists, but I think counting as a saga as a bit of a spell makes sense, and we need so many white pips because we have to be casting Pure Steel Paladin. We can't really afford to wait on that one. So that's why the mana is like this. If I could run more Ancient Dens in this list, I definitely would. But what we're aiming to do is spill out quickly and get people with Esper Sentinels with Colossus Hammers and Michiko Reign of Truth buffing them. Uh, we've also got like a very small tutor package with the Saga. Most of the time it's going to get us Colossus Hammer, but sometimes it can get us a Pith Needle if we need to get around a Maze of Ith or something like that. Uh, a Shadow Spear in case we need to gain life or race in matchups where our opponent could be dealing us a lot of damage. And obviously we can go get our zero drops if we need a creature. The Nettle Sis I think looks better in this version than other versions because we're trying to power out things like Michigo's Reign of Truth, which is also an enchantment creature on the backside as well. So that's pretty much it for the main deck here. Um, we, we don't have a huge amount of interaction, we're just trying to beat our opponent's face game one. Now game two is where we have a little bit more interaction. So Leyland of the Void is just the best way of dealing with graveyards. It's not foolproof these days because people have a lot of ways of removing them, but it will buy us some turns. And in theory, all we need is turns. And this doesn't take our mana to, to play. We can just have this in play and just carry on with our game plan of making some big guys. We also have Leyland of Sanctity, which is kind of the same thing, but just for different matchups. So mainly for... Things like Storm or some of the disruption heavy decks uh, in terms of hand disruption. This, I'm not 100% convinced on the ley line, but some people wanted me to try it, so I thought, why not? Let's give it a go. Uh, we've got some March of Otherworldly Light to nail things like Chalices, uh, Opposing Sagas. Um, there's, there's some relatively good utility on the March of Otherworldly Light, and we can pitch it to hit bigger things if we need to. Then we just round it out with these mismatched copies of Swords to Plowshares because sometimes we're going to need to kill creatures. I'm not sure, this sideboard is definitely isn't the most thought out sideboard I've ever played on my channel, 
but everything here has a very specific and obvious choice. I haven't run the numbers to work out if it's quite perfect yet, but I feel we should just jump in and see how we do. But before we do that, it's right, it's time for a plug. Please, if you can, subscribe to my channel. It doesn't cost you anything and it really helps me out. And if you know anyone else who is interested in watching lots of legacy content, because that's all I make on this channel is legacy content, by all means, send them my links and hopefully I get some more subscribers from them and that would really help me out. All right, enough of that. Let's jump into a legacy league. Okay, so I'm going to play for round one, which is where we want to be. Our hand looks pretty good. We have Sagada's Aid, Colossus Hammer, Esper Sentinel, Mox Opal. We can have a pretty strong turn one here, so we're going to keep this. So we play our Artifact Land. I think we play out our Ornithopter. Play out our Mox Opal. Tap White, play out an Esper Sentinel. So we have a choice here. We can either play out another Esper Sentinel or we can play out a Sagada's Aid. I think we should just play out the Sagada's Aid here. Because this way we're playing around a daze that our opponent could have. Now if they have a count spell, they'll probably hit this and we'll get a card out of it. Okay, so next turn I get to attack them with an 11 power creature. City of Traitors. So if this is a Chalice of the Void, a Chalice of the Void on one, that's pretty annoying for us. We could have made a big Ornithopter this turn, but I think it was better to have the Sentinel out. Mindstone. Don't see that every day. Sure. A Mindstone. And a Chromatic Sphere. I don't know what my opponent is playing. We have here. Okay. So this is going to be a pretty good turn. Pays for white. Cast this. Cast this. So we can hit our opponent for... 17, 18 damage this turn. And then this was reloaded for next turn. We're going to put this damage into the Ornithopter. Okay, our opponent's going to have something pretty good. You need a card? You're going to get a card as well. So this Cordra is not something that is going to do anything for us here. Now our opponent is probably some sort of combo deck, I have to imagine. Yeah, okay, Bergy is not a card you see in places that aren't combo decks. And Lion's Eye Diamond. So this could be some sort of variant of like the Epic Gamble, but Second Sunrisey almost. I don't really know what's happening here. Clearly our opponent wants to sacrifice a load of artifacts and then bring them back. Doubling Cube. Okay, so we're going to draw a bunch of cards here. Like we're basically at our opponent's mercy here, so we may as well yield. They either kill us this turn or they die on the next turn. Helm of Awakening. Okay. So they're playing a load of these to effectively cycle for free. Okay, Helm of Awakening again. So this means things like Grim Monolith are now free. I don't know what my opponent's playing, but it's cool. That's for sure. A Lotus Petal. Sure, so this is going to generate mana with the Bergy. Hanfell. Yep. This could well do it. So they're going to have some redraws with all these artifacts they've got hanging around. Let's have a look. So they're sacking some stuff off now. So they're looking for things. But obviously every one draw they have becomes two cards with the Horn of Harnfell. But I need to know a little bit more about what my opponent's playing. Is it just going to be like a sort of grape shot or burning wish type kill to go and get tendrils because they can filter their mana with their setup with all these stars mystic forge okay got a chromatic star got mystic forge so mana is not going to be an issue for them at this point okay so this all produces a red mana when they cast it and then it untaps all right so it's like a brown version of Ruby Storm, right? Because they've just got all these things to make all their spells cheaper. Khan the Great Creator. Yeah, that certainly does stuff. Etherflux Reservoir. Okay, so it's another one of these Etherflux Reservoir decks. So they need to cast two spells. Yeah, so this will gain them. Oh, and they need to cast, yeah, two spells. Because the next one will gain them enough to put them over 50 and they can dome us for 50. 
All right. I think they have us here. Okay, so they're casting this. So now they're on to 47. Okay, they still need one more spell. Okay, so they're casting this. This pops them up to 71. They can activate the Ether Flux Reservoir. There we go. Cool. That was uh, a bit different. So, what do we want here? Um, Leyline of Sanctity means they can't actually target us with their combo kill, but I have to assume they can just get a load of mana and then get something that blows up Leyline. So, this is only going to work to counter their final thing, and when they're already comboing off, they should have enough resources that they can just ignore this and just go get something to blow it up. The Leyline in the Void, on the other hand, is going to give us the ability to stop their Echo of Eons plans. So I think we can probably strip some of these out. Uh, the Khan is going to be very good against us. But I think we just have to have enough guys on the board. Uh, I don't think Shadow Spear is going to be that relevant here. We can probably trim one of these Net Assists. Uh, we can bring in some removal, something like Bergy. But I don't think it's worth it. I think we just have to go hard and go fast. So we'll submit like this. Uh, do you want to cut one of these for another net assist? No, I think that's just fine. Submit. Uh, okay, the stone forge isn't great here, but we have turn two Mishiko, turn three Mishiko. Is it worth mulliganing to find the uh, the graveyard hate here? Is the question. Like the Stoneforge isn't actually that impressive here. I think we mulligan and see if we can find some hate. Nope, this hand is terrible. This hand is pretty bad as well, but I don't think we can go any lower. Um, we're in a bit of a bind here. Let's have to get rid of this. We kind of need these things. It's probably the pure steel that goes. Yep, I think we're probably going to lose this game. Truth be told. So our plan is to draw Colossus Hammer next turn and put our opponent on a two-turn clock. Which probably will not be enough here. Something like Deafening Silence over the White Ley Lines would have been nice in this sort of matchup. So our opponent knows we don't have any cards in hand so they can sort of take it easy and just... Okay. Play out some bits and pieces. Sure. Set up for the next turn. I don't get to Echo Vions us, which is some a basic planes. I don't think we want to play this out. I mean, we want to keep it in hand. So the Caracas is quite good at the moment because it means the Bergy is something we can bounce. So they don't get to get loads of mana off it. So we kind of have two angles of what their deck does cut off. But we're gonna need something else. Like if they play a Khan. Yeah, Mystic Forge is pretty good too. But Khan is pretty backbreaking for us because it will cut these off as well. Okay, so got a pedal. And the LED. So the LED is going to be very difficult for them to get anything off. They're going to have to draw, activate things like this and then crack with the LED in response. Okay, Grim Monolith. Helm of Awakening. That does help us out a little bit. But I think our opponent is looking like they'll be able to go off this turn. This is kind of the, the downside of our deck in that we can sort of we, we're not all in on a combo, but we do feel a bit like a combo deck in a lot of ways. But we are slower than dedicated combo decks. That's what we're giving up. We're giving up speed in order to have like more like guys and just have a, you know, we're a beatdown deck effectively. So we've got a little bit more flexibility in our cards, whereas this is just a dedicated combo deck. It can only do its one thing, but it can do it fast and better than the things we're doing. Like, even if they don't go off this turn, we still need to draw something here. But if they sacrifice enough life, we might be able to draw the hammer. But they've still got to spend five more life. Michiko is one, two, one, two, three, four, five. So that's not enough damage. Doubling cube. Don't see that one every day. And then explosives for zero. So this can hit two of our permanents. So we're in trouble. 
like this will hit some of their permanents as well but obviously they've got a lot of permanents these are just things that can be removal or can just be zero drops to cycle through with the mystic forge another mind stain well, they can hard cast echo beyonds as well okay so they're untapping making more mana with their monolith okay so they're playing more of their stuff out here where are we going with this? Because I've shut off their massive draw engine and their Mystic Forges are tapped, there is a possibility that I do get another turn. Now, whether that turn is going to be good enough for us to win the game seems very unlikely. But it's not impossible. Okay, so we're getting into the full grip here. This isn't the hand that we can dump into play, but this does give us pumps for our Mishikes. Chromatic stars into the Ectile zone. There's the Bergy. We need to turn off the yields now. Let's bounce this guy. Unfortunately, they're just going to get the Red Man and they have the Hell's Awakening and they can just cast it again. So it's not really going to do us a lot of good. Sure. We'll carry on yielding. Yep. I'll take key. Lines are diamond. Another diamond. I still need to find the Khan. Walking Ballista. Okay. This is something they can pump a load of mana into. Okay, another Mystic Forge. Them having two creatures also means that we don't get to kill them with one guy anymore. Because we can bounce one, but we can't do anything about the other one. Okay, so we've got a new hand. This doesn't do anything. We need to kind of cycle into, like, well, I don't really know what we can cycle into here. Colossus Hammers would be a start, but they have the engine explosives, so if they pass with mana up, they can just kill our things. It's one of those situations where we're 90% dead, but it's not entirely deterministic. Okay, this is... Okay, so their deck has basically one Khan in, so they're going to be searching for a deck until they find that one Khan. I don't think there's a huge amount we're going to be able to do about this. Okay, Mox Opal. How much mana have they got at this point? Not the most. What have they got? 18, 19? So they don't have enough to make Walking Ballista le lethal on its own. But. Continue to go through there. So what the horn does as well is it clears the top of their deck if it's something they can't cast off of the Mystic Forge. It certainly looks more interesting than the version that I played against the other day that was one of these decks that went through the loops. Yeah, my opponent's deck was pretty cool. I like that one. All right. So, this is our opening hand. We're on the play. What does it do? It's a little bit slow. We get Sigarda's Aid. Hmm, I don't know if this one is quick enough. But it looks more resilient, so we're going to give it a go. So here we just want to lead out with an Esper Sentinel. And then we'll play this Memnite out because it's plus one damage. And the next turn, we'll probably push playing the Stoneforge Mystic. But we'll see what our opponent does. Just a Misty Rainforest. Okay. So let's play this out. Play out the Stoneforge Mystic here. So we have two choices here. Well, we have, well, we have lots of choices, don't we? I think we're just going to get the hammer here. And go attacks. Then we can play out another zero drop. Then much to the rescue. Our opponent is cracking Mr. Rainforest end of turn. A savannah. Okay. So is that just a bonus green fetch or are they like some sort of bant shell? A wasteland. So we're going to lose our Rosa Saga. Sure. It's looking more like some sort of... Um, 
I don't know, like, uh, oh, this is not ideal, is it? Um, let's try the Sagada's Aid here. We've got a second one anyway. I think our opponent is on some sort of maybe like depth type strategy here. But we'll attack for four. Just making little guys. Okay, yeah, so they are more bantish. So they just drew. These decks tend to have like one or two wastelands in them. Okay, I suspect this Colossus Hammer that I'm about to cast is going to get countered, but we'll see. This is an interesting one. If I put it on the Esper Sentinel, it's going to tax them nicely. But they can remove it in response. But whatever I play here, they're removing in response. So I could put on a Memnite so that the thing they're removing isn't as good. They're going to pay the one. They aren't going to pay the one. So they've got them down to 10. Now their deck is almost certainly a deck that has Uro in it. So we're going to have to try and play through that. Obviously we can deal huge chunks of damage if we can draw the right thing. So if we draw a planes here we can put in a Nettle Cyst. Ooh, that's pretty bad for us. Terminus is not one you see that often these days. Um, sure. Okay. That's pretty bad for us. We need to draw some more mana now. A Shadow Spirit. That's not really going to cut it, is it? And we have these Sigala's Aids doing nothing right now. I think we just play out the Shadow Spear. I'm kind of annoyed these control decks of like three, four color control decks get to run Wasteland and rarely, if ever, get punished for it. But yeah, I think we are in some real trouble here. So the reason, another reason for playing out Shadow Spear is to make Metalcraft online for when we have a Pure Steel Paladin. We need to get Metalcraft online as quickly as possible in those situations. Prismatic ending. Okay, so the cigar is has gone, but we've got plenty more where that came from. It's the only thing we do have, unfortunately. And then there's another one. Sure. Let's just keep playing them out. The cigar is does allow you to play equipment with flash. Okay, so this is going to be a little awkward. So when I played the Colossus Hammer, I could have waited, but it's going to be the same regardless what I do there. Because I just had the removal spell up. So it's going to come in for three. And we are desperately in search of anything now. Yep, it's cracking flooded strand after their brainstorm. A volcanic kind of Yeah, so the, the classic four color control decks with wastelands. Minsk and Boo. So we are dead in like two turns, I think. So this is. Yeah, so we are dead. Is it two? That's the seven this turn, and then it's 13 next turn. So not quite dead. But we obviously have to try and find some way of winning through all this nonsense, which I don't think we're going to have. Let's just take the draw and then concede. An Ornithopter, sure. We'll concede this game. So this feels like where the old builds that I was running before that had the Mother of Runes in would have been a, a little bit better than what we're left with here. So we have Source Plowshares if we want to get rid of some of the guys that get in the way. Or we can just keep trying to pose questions and just try not to worry about what our opponent's doing. Although if they're a green deck, they could have um, Collector Roof, which is something we're going to have to deal with. So maybe we need to do something about that. Quite what that is going to be, I don't know. We need to keep all of our hits in, so it's the... It's the other cards that need to come out. So we can probably trim a couple of Ornithopters. They're probably going to have Meltdown or something as well. I don't think this is going to be a Shadow Spear matchup. I think that would probably do. I don't think we need to have loads of these. We don't want to dilute our core too much. So this is the opening hand we've been dealt. This hand allows us to make a turn one Stoneforge Mystic. I think we have to keep that. One. Two. Three. White, white, Stoneforge. Because of the situation we're in here, I think we're going to get the Sword of Fire and Ice. It's not as backbreaking as a Cauldra, but it's going to give us, because we've got these rubbish bodies, we, we can force removal on them by jamming the Sword of Fire and Ice down their throats. Okay. This is either going to be a Ponder or a Source of Plowshares, I would imagine. 
Sword of Fire and Ice doesn't really protect me from that much in our opponent's deck, unfortunately. But it does draw us cards and deal a lot of damage. Okay, they're going after the Mox Opal. That's interesting to me. Esper Sentinel. Okay, so it would have been nice to have a Mox Opal. In this turn, we attack with the Memnite. We put in the Sword of Fire and Ice at their end step. And then we can play a Pure Steel Paladin and equip. This takes us off Metalcraft by removing that. But we also have an Esper Sentinel. So we can have Metalcraft. My opponent's probably not running days, they're just running hard counters and removal spells. The amount of removal spells that's currently in their deck is probably very high, and the amount of counter spells in their deck is probably quite low, because in these sorts of matchups, when you're playing control, you quite often board out the two for ones and you just want to be able to remove things. Collector Oof. So this is why we boarded in some source of plowshares. Exactly like that. So let's plow this guy. This is white. White. Group zero, so targets. Let's put it on the worst guy. Attack with all creatures. Deal them two extra. And draw a card. Okay, this is looking a little bit better. I'm going to have to waste removal on my Memnite to get rid of the sword for to at instant speed to get rid of the sword here. If they have a second green source and pass, then I would probably put it on this so I can uh, beat through a, an endurance. That doesn't look like what our opponent has. Now, they are a Terminus deck, so we don't want to overload the board too much from this point onwards. Misty Rainforest. So this could be another Prismatic Ending, or it could be just Source of Plowshares. It's shuffling away the Brainstorm, so we shouldn't expect Terminus. This could be a Meltdown as well. Okay, Prismatic Ending. We have another Pure Steel, so that's fine. No Mox Opal. I think the correct thing to do this turn is play this guy out. What we're going to do is we're going to attack, draw a card. So we could have attacked to try and get the card first. But the opponent could be playing some sort of random Force of Vigor type effect. Seems very unlikely. But the plan is to... Okay, there, there is the Force of Vigor. We get to draw a card off of it. And they're hitting the sword. It's a little bit annoying. Did not expect our opponent to really be playing the Force of Vigor there, but I did say that they, that's a thing they can have. Okay, that means our opponent probably doesn't have Meltdown as well then. Which means we're probably fine to spill this one out. Do we play out the pure steel? I think we have to... Our clock is so mediocre without it. We need to double our clock there. So this can get punished by Terminus, but they shuffled away their Brainstorm before. They exiled an Uro for the Force of Vigor as well. But they shuffled away their last Brainstorm, so I shouldn't expect them to just rip the Terminus that turn. And if we draw a Colossus Hammer or a Stone Forge, we can kill them next turn. Expressive Iteration. Swords of Plowshares has entered the Exile Zone. So we're getting one of our creatures plowed. Yep. Sure. Cauldra Complete would be an interesting one to draw. We can jam that down their throat and deal them some damage, unless they're just going to cast another removal spell here. So we've had Prismatic Ending, Prismatic Ending, Force of Vigor, Swords of Plowshares. Have they got another another one? This could just be a, a Ponder type effect though. Okay, it looks more like what it's going to be. Yeah, there's a Ponder. Called it. Yeah, our opponent's had a lot of stuff. Oof. Double Ending, Plow, Force of Vigor. So we played through a lot of our opponent's hate and we're not out we're not completely out of it yet. We could still win this game. We have some live draws. We also have some abysmal draws. I'm going to keep this one back just in case our opponent does have a meltdown in their deck because they do have red sources. And I give our opponent more things to think about. Can I get there with these terrible one power guys? They can play a Minsk and Boo and just up to bury us. Is that what they're doing here? Well, they have meltdown as well. Jeez. Our opponent. Basically, he built a deck to beat us, by the looks of it. Okay. Call to complete this time. Not quite. Okay, so we play this one out this time. Let's see if we can get this one down. We can't attack into them because they could have an endurance here. If we've got the Cauldra before instead of the Sword of Fire and Ice, we might have been in a better spot, to be honest. But I felt we needed more cards to dig our way out a little bit. 
So they're putting the expressive iteration on top of the library. Sure. What a what a great uh, interaction there is. Dress down. Sure. They can't flash in an endurance now, though, so we do get our one point of damage. And if we naturally draw a quarter next turn, then we get to kill them. So again, we're still not dead, but yeah, our opponent did not really want us to win this game. Yikes. Force of Vigor and Meltdown feels like a lot. Feels greedy to have all of that. I can't imagine they have the most green cards in their deck, to be honest. So it's kind of interesting to me. But we are basically, I think today is the last day before the new stuff gets patched into Magic Online, so people playing all sorts of weird and wonderful stuff, I suspect. Well, look at us, we can't really talk, can we? The Plough on our Stoneforge Mystic. Again, we can still draw a quarter complete here, unless they've got another one, another removal spell. Could be a Prismatic Ending. It's a White Source. Jeez. Yep, sure. Our opponent, uh, I don't think, could have drawn better. Well, obviously, they have filled their stuff, but uh, and their deck's going to be packed full of these things. Okay, so we play this one out in case we draw an equipment that we can put on it. Uh, but I'm not sure what equipments we have left to put on it now. Right, a brainstorm, sure. Okay, they finish resolving the brainstorm. This is like a mince kombu to me red, green, white. Okay, Mince Kombu. Sure. So they can big this up. That's fine. We really don't want to source the plowshares this because if we give them any more life, we're probably not winning this game. So the way we win this game, uh, we can always bounce with Caracas actually. That was a mistake. Should do it now, really, shouldn't I? That was definitely an error. I was a bit defeated there and didn't realize I had the out to the. The mince can boo immediately. All right. So now what's our opponent going to do? I can bounce this in response and they won't have a creature to sack because of the way this works. It's not sacrifice as a cost. So I've kind of nullified their mince can boo here. But maybe they're just playing an Uro. Yeah. But they will need an additional green source to play the back half this turn. And we can just bounce it and plough it and all sorts. So they can bounce their own arrows if they want to. So ploughing it won't work. Our opponent's going to have to find a way of winning the game at some point. Uh, I guess we play out this Mox Opal. Is there any point playing out the Ornithopter? I don't think so. Just hold it. And we'll not attack with our 0 2. This is the Mem Knight. We might have been able to get quite a few attack steps in here. See, the problem here is that the plough has to hit the Euro, really, but the Caracas can bounce it. So kind of in a, between an, a rock and a hard place. Okay, our opponent found their own wasteland. Guess he bounced the boo this time. And maybe try and snap off the source to plough shares if we can hit another white source. So if we can, if we can hit another sword so we can maybe get around the Caracas. Right, so it's our turn again. Let's see what rubbish we draw. A pithing needle, you say? Hmm. Let's try this one out. So shut that off. We kind of need our opponent to tap out of this Caracas at some point in this game. We do have four life less than we should have because we didn't Caracas when we could have earlier. But this game, again, is one of those ones that's pretty much over, but there are minor chances we can get back in this game. Which is ridiculous. A brainstorm. Sure. There's kind of no point source to plowshares in this creature just yet. We need to be able to have a, a follow up source to plowshares. So I think we just take the six here. Which is bad. Also, they can just cast the front half of it again and gain more life anyway. I don't particularly enjoy these matchups against these sorts of control decks. Feels like they just have quite a lot of tools and they didn't get punished for the greediness against a lot of decks. And I really dislike the design of Minskin Boo as a card. Hmm. 
we have to let that go. We still have two white sources because this is metalcraft at the moment. If we draw a second plow, we can guarantee killing the euro. Just, just play this out. Let's carry on. It's not particularly exciting coverage. Uh, so we've used one source power shares. We do have another one stuck in our deck that we can use to kill this euro. Yeah, they're just expressive iteration every time. I'm just going to concede. Like, there is a chance we can win this game, but the problem is this is such an incredibly boring match. It's not really worth making you watch it, just for the minor chance that we can get out of it. Uh, I'm not sure if they would be able, if, if they would have another Uru, so if I can answer this, and we have a Pith and Needle answer in this, our opponent may have very few ways to win the game outside of an Endurance. Um, but yeah, I just... It's too tedious to play this match any longer, so I'm just going to go to the next round. We lost the dial. Our opponent is the Daddy, who is a Dredge Specialist. So we probably need to keep a hand that beats Dredge. What does that look like? That's a good question. I don't think a turn two Calder on the draw is, is the one, though. So I think we should mulligan this. This kind of has some of the stuff we want. But is it good enough to beat the Dredge? I don't think it is. What, what does the best hand we can have in this matchup look like? It's just a turn one hammer, right? Something with a turn one hammer on it. Even then, it's going to be hard to push through. I think we keep, and then we try and draw draw into the thing we need. But I think we lose this, this match, this game. But we do have the four ley lines in the board, so that'd be nice. Underground C. Preordain. What? This isn't dredge. Is this Doomsday? That's very strange to me. I think we have to play this out. It's kind of awkward. We don't really have a cheap threat. Now we could have played the Saga out on turn one, and then turn two, play the aid. But then turn three, we still wouldn't be able to make a token. So. Certainly looks like our opponent's playing Doomsday. And if the daddy is off of Dredge, that's that shows you how bad Dredge must be in the meta right now. So the sorry state of affairs. Polluted Delta. You know, cracking their polluted delta? Tropical Island. And the Lotus Petal. This could still be Okay, this looks like the build that has the um, Veil of Summer in it. Oh. Summon is packed. Well, I think we're losing this turn. Oh, okay. It's Turbo Bloom. Okay. I see. Yeah. Right. So that changes things entirely. Uh, our opponent's going to be trying to disrupt our hand, and we're also going to have a creature that we want to kill. So these spells all have text. Sort of fine ice, probably not so great here. We cut some nettle cysts. I don't think we're going to be needing the Shadow Spear. Pith Needle is not going to have a lot of utility in this matchup. I'm sort of left with these things. I think the Calder is a fine card to race with still. I'm looking at one, two, three more cards. So we can trim some of our one drops, perhaps. Our zero drops, even. It does make our Mox Opal slightly weaker. Do something like that. A slightly slow again. We still have a high density of these to make our Mox Opal tick. Maybe we need the Mox Opal over a Memnite. Over an Ornithopter, probably. We like creatures that have power. Let's try this. So we have a removal spell to interact with, but we don't have our own game plan that actually does anything. So I think we have to mulligan this. Well, this doesn't have any lands. So I have to mulligan this one. This doesn't really do anything, so I think I have to go to three here. This is the best card, the best hand we've had so far. But it's not very good. So we get to keep four of these. So we need to keep the ley line. The saga is good. The planes is good. Is it the Mishikos or is it the Esper Sentinel? It's probably the Esper Sentinel just to try and draw out of it. Can't believe he's not playing Dredge. All right. So we might be able to draw some cards to try and ease our way out of the mulligan here. And then we can try and play another Saga game. Maybe have some removal along the way would be nice. If you're still paladin, that's not removal. We get to attack for one. Okay, our opponent's playing underground C. So at least we know the thresholds and breakpoints of what they're doing now. 
they're going to pay two for this preordain? I suspect they probably will. It's very unlikely they have a line that wins this turn, so they should probably just pay. Yeah, okay, there it is. These sorts of combo matchups are really not what we want to see. A land? A land. Okay. So then we can make an end of turn as a saga token and then we get to put a Colossus Hammer on our guy with using our Pure Steel Paladin. So we want to... Uh-oh. We might just be dead this turn, I guess. They got it. Sure. And they got that as well. Uh -huh. And that's me done. So we're on the play. We get to kind of do our thing. We have far too many lands in this hand. I think we should mulligan. I think we can keep this one. Been off one of the ornithopters. So we've got a one drop and a two drop. And our three drop, if we hit another land, lets us pure steel and colossus hammer in the same turn. So. Now we're a little bit cold to wasteland here. Let's play this out. I think we play this out now. And then we say go. A basic island. Okay. A bauble. Are you going to pay? You're going to pay. So take the runs basic island and bauble. There are basic islands in 8 cast, just not very many of them. Are they going to crack the bauble in my upkeep? No, they're not. Okay. So. And we're making a Stainford Mystic. So I think we should just get the problem with the Colossus Hammer is if our Pure Steel Paladin doesn't resolve, we get nothing. And we already have the uh, the ticking down on the Urza Saga. So maybe this is again where we want to be getting sort of finalized against their blue deck. It's either that or weirdly Nettle Cyst, I think. Could be the Cauldra Complete, which will force removal on the. Let's get the Cauldra Complete and do a removal check. If they don't have removal, then we'll know. Because the deck tends, if it is what I think it is, it's the eight, eight castle deck. They tend not to have much removal main deck. And also, uh, once something's on the board, it's very hard for them to deal with. So just being able to stone forge in this Cauldra is going to do a lot of work. Okay, so they've realised they can't afford to keep paying for these triggers now. So this is when an opponent casts their first spell each turn, counter that spell. Okay. Well, the funny thing is, I have a Memnite that I don't care about too much. Okay, we might be able to win this game. Certainly within the realms of possibility. Which is nice. I can't bounce this. Uh, let me just play this one out. I'm not casting a spell. I think Thraven Yu was playing on their channel, had this this uh, Arayo deck the other day. I think it was Thraven Yu. And so that's probably where the list is from. I'm not going to bother looking it up. Just going to roll with it. So next turn we get Colossus Hammer and Pure Steel Paladin, and we kill our opponent. And if our opponent tries to cast anything to interact with us, it's probably be a counter spell, I would imagine. Bouncing our Frexen Gem Taker would be pretty annoying. Emery, okay. Mana Maze. Players can't cast spells that share a colour with the spell most recently cast this turn. Okay. It doesn't really impact me because I'm mainly artifacts. Okay, let's see what we draw. I'm pretty sure we're just floating mana on this. Oh, that's a nice one. Um, let's float this. I think our opponent is pretty dead. Cast this hammer. Cast this. Yep. Oh no, my spell that was bad. And we still got this Mishiko as well. So this one can go on this guy. Is that right? No, that's probably not right. It should be on the trampler. But if they have a bounce spell, how worried am I that they have a bounce spell? 
Oh, it could be the jam. Okay. And we were going to Michiko the Ornithopter, which was going to give it plus seven this turn. So, all right. Our opponent is playing some sort of weird little Arayo deck. Um, I guess maybe these March of the Worldly Lights are going to be nice here. Uh, sort of Fire and Ice probably has text. Shadow of a Spear probably not so much. Pithany Duel, they're going to have some sort of Khan or something in the deck, right? I can't actually remember too much about the deck that's played. Maybe it's just a Nettle Sister go. Like, Michiko feels like a better Nettle Sister a lot of the time to me. Which is weird, but uh, I like it. It's like, it's immediate damage, whereas this is very slow. So I like the Michiko a lot. Let's go like this. It's also white to pitch to otherworldly light. So with this hand, I can play a lot of cards, but none of them are any good. So <laughs> we're going to mulligan. This hand seems okay. Uh, we can keep this. We can't make... We need to keep two white sources. We kind of need to keep Metalcraft for the purposes of our pure steel as well. We could bin off the planes. That feels so sketchy though. I think we'll bin off the planes. We got two draw steps to hit another land there. And I want to be able to play this. Like we can always just play both of these on one. And then on two play the Michiko and get a little bit of damage. Okay, so there and there's a Saga deck as well. Tormod's Crypt. That doesn't impact our deck. There's a Bauble. Shadow Spear. Okay. They've played a lot of things out. Both of our decks are just kind of playing some stuff out and hoping that it assembles into a combo. A Colossus Hammer. Okay. So we can play this one out. Uh, play this one out. Play this one out. Put this one out. This turns on our Metalcraft. So we have a double white we needed now. And then next turn we can pure steel attack for 10. And turn after we can Michiko if we need to. So I think we're in a good spot. If our opponent makes a little Arayo thing, then I guess we're going to be on the Urza's, Urza Saga beatdown plan until we find a zero drop that we can cast into it. But our deck feels naturally quite good against the Arayo because we have these sort of bad zero drop creatures to facilitate our deck. They're quite useful to throw away. So this is representing an Urza Saga token. Okay, white, white. Cast the sky. Crypt of this. Attacks. And next time we're getting another Colossus Hammer off the Urza Saga as well if we need it. So... Not a bad spot to be in. And this Mishiko is going to be huge. When it eventually becomes useful. Yep. And they've taken two damage there. So this will be four, five, six, seven potentially. So this should be enough to finish our opponent off. Most likely. The Shadow Spear is not going to give them enough lifelink, I don't think, here. Now, they could be getting something like an Aether Spell Bomb, which can bounce our Ornith up to here, which would obviously be a little bit annoying, but again, zero mana to equip is not a lot of mana. But we'll see what our opponent gets here. A Pithing Needle. What are you going to name? Colossus Hammer, probably. Could name Ares as Saga, so we don't make a token next turn. There's a Saga, okay, so they don't have to make a token. We still get to get the artifact out of it, though. So this could be equip, Coloss uh, equip Shadow Spear to one of their guys. But both of my guys are going to be bigger than that because of the Colossus Hammer coming out of here. I'm not sure as a saga is the name there. If they name Colossus Hammer, I can't get one out of this and then equip it to the Paladin. I think that's just an error there. Claim the Firstborn. Oh, okay. That's certainly... Uh, a lot, isn't it? That's 17 damage they're representing there. Emery. Okay. Claiming the firstborn. Not seen that in Legacy before. Makes sense. People play lots of things that cost, is it three or less? Yeah. So we just got to take a big old hit for 17 here, I think. Uh, I think we boarded out our Shadow Spear, which is annoying. Hopefully they'll have a way of getting rid of our Ornithopter. 
playing with the first pawn. So they're always making mana here because we can't make a token because of the pit and needle. So we did take out we needed that. So we can't give our guy trample. Hmm, we're in a weird game now, aren't we? Let's get this Colossus Hammer out. And yes, I would like to draw a card. A Caracas. That's not a bad one, is it? Play the Caracas out. We can bounce the Emery. Force the chump block with the... Uh, no, we just kill them, right? Return this. Equip this. Attack with two lethal threats. They have one card in hand. Seems good to me. And this one up. So they can only block one of these. And then they die. And we managed to get win on the board. They have two cards in hand. One of them is an Emery. I'm not sure what one what single card for zero mana could save them here. They'd have made the play with putting the status on one of the guys. I think they'd be in a better slot spot there. They'd still be in trouble, but I think they'd be in best slot. So we actually managed to win a match. All right, we didn't play this Mishiko, but it looked pretty good sitting in my hand, just having this extra burst of damage if we need it. It kind of does a similar thing to, to what we're doing here. So, all right, on to the final round to see if we can scrape back 50 play points. This is one of those hands that looks almost tempting, but we'd need another artifact to really do anything. We are on the draw. I think we should mulligan though. We, we can't afford to keep her shaky mana base. Can't afford to keep this either. Mm, mulligan. This isn't a good one, but it does let me play an Urza's Saga game from turn two. So I can keep the I can keep five of these cards. So we need to keep the Opal, the Memnite, the Saga, the Sestral. So we're getting rid of the planes and probably has to be an ancient end, even though this does pump our guy. No, I think we can... Oh, hmm. I think it's safer just to play like this. My hand isn't very good. Okay, a Mother of Runes. That's not too scary. Our guys are colourless, so that helps. Another Ezra Saga isn't the worst, though. Play out some terrible cards. Unfortunately, we don't have Melkraft for this because this is... And Charmin Land instead of an artifact, which is probably for the best at the end of the day. So go, but next turn we'll have enough mana. So this Mother of Runes won't actually do anything against our big colourless creatures. Wasteland. That will certainly do something against our... Yeah, we do have a backup saga though. And a second Mother of Runes. Okay. Do they want to trade a Mother of Runes for my Memnite? Maybe? I don't know. I don't know if that's worth me attacking on my turn, to be honest. I think just having bodies in play is really useful for us right now. What do you got for us, deck? That's for Sentinel. So we're just going to play out the Saga. And we're basically the same place we were last time, except they've got plus one Mother of Runes. Kind of need to hit an artifact here to get the Ezra Saga really ticking. I was kind of expecting to hit one before now, but... All right, Richard and Port. They're coming in with their Mother of Runes. Sure, I can take two. Okay, just playing out Stonefoid Mystic. So this is certainly going to race the things that we're doing. So we might be a bit buried after this. But we'll see. I don't see a lot of 60 card death and taxes these days. It's nice. Living in a world without companions. The world we probably should live in. Cauldra complete. Let's have a look. Zero drops to turn on armor. Mox Opal doesn't even look particularly great right now. Colossus Hammer. That's not what anyone would describe as the one, is it? So I think we just have to cast this one. Cast this one off of this. We don't want to play our Colossus Hammer in case we draw Sigarda's aid. Uh, so we're going to get bopped by this Cauldra complete. And I'm not really sure how we beat it. But I'm sure I'll think of something. Sure. So, I'm going to take quite a lot of damage from this. 
Now we might be able to get some lifelink on the go here with a shadow spear. We need to kind of set that up. And they can just hold their Phyrexian germ token back on blocks if that happens. But if that happens, it's not the worst for us. At least they're holding it back on blocks rather than killing our face with it. Okay, this time we make one of these. This is going to be quite a large one at least. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, including the Memnite. So I think we probably just want the Shadow Spit here. So we can start that whole shenanigans. So we've got to take another hit from the germ if they want to, but I don't necessarily think they do because they're going to be getting clocked for eight lifelink on the backswing, and that's not a race they win, especially since my guy is colourless. But they have cards in hand, so who knows. Okay, a wasteland. That doesn't actually impact us anymore. There's a turn too late on that one. They can rush it and put us down, so we need to draw a mana source to equip the Shadow Spear, which might be what they choose to do here. Nope. Are they going to flick a wisp away our token? That would be very good. Okay, they're ploughing our construct token. Sure. And they're paying for all the triggers. So we do not get any cards from this exchange. Sure. So we're going to get a big chunk of life here and put us back to 20, so... It's given us turns to find something. If they attack with this, we can put our Shadow Spear on a creature and send it in. Probably has to be one of the Mem Knights because they're colourless. I could double block and trade Mem Knights for Stoneforge here, but I don't think that's worth doing at this point. I think we're better off just having maximum bodies and maximum artifacts because if we get something like Michiko, that will massively increase the size of our creatures. All right, let's see how we do with this draw step. A Michiko. Hmm. I think we cast the Michiko now. And then try and equip Shadow Spin next turn. Now, again, we can get punished by ports. We only need to draw one mana source for that to work. Okay. Go, go, guys, at Memnite. Calder does a lot, but it doesn't gain life. So that's something. They might just be sort of plowing this because they're thinking of it a while. Okay, if they're going to plow it, they should have plowed it before. So I don't think they have a plow now. Feel the might of my colourless creature. And next turn it gets to do the exact same thing again. And I can hopefully equip a Shadow Spear to it. And then have a big 9 power guy. And then next turn this flips. Now it will be a white creature. So the Mother of Runes is going to be effective against it. Okay, a Plains. That's good. It's not really an exciting for a print. Athalia. Okay. So if they're going to use the port on us, that's going to be bad. They can also use the Thalia to go in front of this and bounce it. So we definitely need to hit the mana source for the Shadow Spear around the Rishdown port this turn. If we do, I think we're okay. They might not even attack this turn because of it. Oh no, they're still attacking. Pretty bold. Hoping that I don't rip the mana source there. It could even be another Mox Opal because I can float off of the first one. Uh, wait, no, I can't because they have a Thalia. It can't be a Mox Opal. Okay, so we need to have a mana source. An un uh, uh, we need to have a land. We need to draw a land, and then I think we can win this game. Sure. Goodbye, Basic Plains. Give us a land. Come on. Let's catch a break. Oh, we did not catch a break. Oh, dear, oh dear. So we still make this attack because it forces our opponent to at least commit more resources on the next turn. We might even put two Esper Sentinels in front of the Stoneforge Mystic this turn. But is that worth doing? I don't know. Yeah, we could really do with drawing. Okay. That is a very weird play to me when you have the Caracas. Because you can just you can put your failure in and bounce because it just doesn't have trample. But I was just trading one of their resources away. So they can attack with everything this turn if they wanted to. But I don't think that's a great thing. So basically, we need to draw the land again. We've bricked on a couple of turns this land. If we hit it, I think we're fine. If we don't, then I think we're dead. Okay, so it's just the fraction germ coming in. Oh no, 
the thylus coming in too. No? I think we're just dead here, right? Because the Michiko, I was missing that land last turn. This doesn't get to pump anything this turn, so we're not going to have a big life-linking body. We're going to have a, a small life-linking body, which is not going to be enough when they have this guy. We're not going to be able to put enough things. Actually, the Michigo can go under the bus for it, actually. And it can soak up the trample damage. And we can put something in front of this. So they're going to port us down again. Yep, yeah, sure. Cool, cool, cool. Give us a thing. Give us a land. Stay Forge Mystic. So we're technically not dead. Um, well, they have a Mother of Runes. Uh, yeah, I think we're just dead here, right? Yeah, that turn we bricked on the land a couple of turns in a row. If we if we hit the Shadow Spear that turn, then we're attacking with an eight with a nine power lifelink guy then. And I think that's enough to swing it, but sadly it was not to be. So our opponent's playing some creatures. So we can have these, and we can have these. These are all very nice things. The Sword of Fire and Ice is okay here, actually. It gives us a way of uh, pinging down some of their guys. Because they can make quite wide boards, so it's just like a removal spell. The Nettle Assist is going again, I think. And then we're probably getting rid of some of our worst creatures. Which I think is on the top to here. And then we get one more thing. We probably still want to keep the Pit of Needles in. The Esper Sentinel doesn't feel very good here. But we do need to keep Esper Sentinels for bodies. But maybe Ornithopters are better than Esper, Esper Sentinels in this matchup, which is crazy. Purely because they're zero drops, but also they're colourless. So we can put a Sword of Fire and Ice on them. In that case, I want Nettlesis to put on them as well, just to get the extra beatdown going. That's not a terrible plan. But we've already got the Michiko, which kind of does that anyway. All right, I think we'll submit like this. This hand lets me play the Heirs of Saga game into Pure Steel Paladin. I think we have to keep this one. And we're going to play our stuff out first because our opponent has things like Thalia in their deck. Now, they could also have Kataki in their deck, which is just going to kill us, I guess. Right, Azaga, Mox Opal, Memnite. The next turn we can play an Ancient Den and then activate our Urza Saga. And then after that we can activate Urza Saga. And then after that we put we start making Colossus Hammers onto our lads with the Pure Steel. A Caracas. Have they got a Vile or a Mother of Runes? No wasteland means they probably don't have a wasteland because I think you just snap off straight away on the saga. They could blow up one of our permanents here, like one of these two. They could even have a March for the Body Light for our. There's a saga. Prismatic ending on the Mox Opal. Okay, so the purpose of doing that means that we don't get to activate our Ezra Saga next turn, which is a bit rude. Maybe we'll draw another Mox. We did not draw another Mox. Um. That's fine. I think we just play this out. This will give our creature plus four. So we're attacking for five this turn, and then more next turn. Go, go, Gadget Memnite. They could have a Solitude, but they should have used it before the Mishiko trigger resolved. So it seems unlikely they have a Solitude here. They could have just missed it, and they could have just missed the trigger, and then they have to give me five life if they want to stop it. Or they could just be playing slowly because they're doing other stuff. Who knows? So I think we have lethal next turn with Pure Steel Paladin, Colossus Hammer, and this pumping the Memnite. So it'll be 10 plus 5. So if they don't put a blocker in the way, they lose. Athalia. Okay. So presumably this is going to have to go under the bus. We sadly don't get to do anything with this, but uh, target creature, this creature. Let me tap this. And we're going to get. Um, is there a way that we can? No, there's no way that we can win this turn. Uh, if we get shadow spear and equip, no, we need the colossus hammer. And play this out. Uh, we don't actually have... Oh, we do have Metalcraft, don't we? Yes. Because this is an artifact. So equip zero on this guy. We get to kill the, the Thalia this turn. 15 damage, please. 
This Michiko card, I think, is actually very good. This is one of the only things I've liked about this deck today. <laughs> the uh, Some of the Pure Steel Paladin Colossus Hammer stuff hasn't really panned out. But I've been enjoying uh, this. Maybe uh, there's some, some different shell for this. This is quite strong. It's like two Cranial Platins and a guy, and, and a, as a Saga token for two mana, which seems pretty good. So if they play a creature, we can blow it up. Okay, green mana. Oh dear. What? Why is it green? It might just be green because it's colourless. Okay, they didn't have anything. Cool, we managed to take a game with that. I felt pretty good. Do you want to change anything? I don't think so. I think we just uh, roll it back and see how we go. We're definitely faster than our opponent, which helps. This hand doesn't really go anywhere, so I've got the mana, and it's quite slow, so we should have mulliganed. Uh, we can't get this because it's got no mana. It's got one land on the draw. It's even remotely keepable. I think we have to mulligan again. I guess. So we want Sigarda's Aid, Caracas, Mox Opal. We don't need Pure Steel Paladin, don't need both Stone Forges. If we draw any zero drop, the Colossus Hammer is great. You can't really guarantee the ability to Stone Forge Mystic. Uh, I think we have to do this and try and top deck a zero drop creature. Maybe we could have got rid of the Mox Opal. Chance the Void for zero? Yeah. Okay, should have got rid of the mox opal. Okay, <laughs> absolute punish there. Sure. Interesting they brought in the chalice of the void just for. Well, I suppose I do have the other things. I didn't. It's not usually something you see too often in death and taxes, to be honest. Uh, it's going to be pretty good here. It's going to hit a decent chunk of my creatures. Aganjo Castle and Aganjo Sea of the Empire. All the Aganjos. So now we need to hit. Source to plowshares, really. Otherwise, we're just going to get killed by this cauldron in a few turns' time. Yep. Okay. It's not looking fantastic for us right now. Let's see what we have. It's going to be another mox open, isn't it? A stone forge that we can't cast. Uh, sure. So we got four turns now, and we can't draw any zero drops. We brought out the one drops because we weren't expecting a chalice from our opponent, so that's a bit awkward. Uh, if I'd have seen the chalice in game two, I would have gone to a 4 4 split of zero drops and won the, uh, what you call it, the Esper Sentinel. I think we're just going to get bodied by this. I reported it in seven removal spells that we can all cast on this, so. And one of them can hit the chalice if we need to. We want to keep this in hand in case we need much to the otherworldly light, I think, so. We just have to pass and take six. Athalia, yep. So this is not really going great for us. Much further what we like is going to cost X one white because of Thalia. I can't really reduce the cost of it. Okay, so that's that's part of the plan. Can we play dueling banjos with Frex and gem tokens? Order complete. So our germs will kill each other, but then they have these other guys on board. And we take five, six, seven this turn. You'll put us to two. So we're going to need something else here. Source to power shares. Okay. So we go up to ten and we take five, six, seven, eight. And then we're almost certainly dead on the next turn. Oakley Doakley. A Mox Opal. Let's cast this Mox Opal and show our opponent how bad our hand was. Okay, have a look at these. More Mox Opals as well. Alright, so that's the end of the league. So, what do I think of the deck? Um, I don't think it was very good. Uh, that's not going to surprise you. It was a 1-4, so it's not exactly a great result. When we played this deck before, we uh, we played a couple of different iterations of this deck. We played one with Wastelands, and then we played another build that was sort of a little bit different, um, sort of leaning. It had 
more options for Stoneforge. It was more like a, a Mother of Rune Stoneforge deck than a, you know, than full on going hammer time. But we, you know, we still still have the hammers and stuff like that, and that was like our plan. But this time we, we kind of tried to speed it up and add some extra things in, and we we have more mana sources than we have in any of the previous builds I played. But we didn't get to really, you know, we mulliganed a lot of hands. So this, this version was supposed to have more payoffs. So it was supposed to mulligan less was the idea. Because if you've got a hand with Stoneforge or um, Sagada's Aid or Michiko. Um, so you've got all of these things to have in your opening hand that really can speed you along. Like combinations of these things, obviously. Sagada's Aid and Hammer, Pure Steel and Hammer, Stoneforge, whatever... And then you've also got Sagas, which is another good thing to have in your opening hand, alongside things like Michikos now, which can, if you're playing all these zero drops out, you can bash people like we did in that other game where we came in for five on turn two, and then turn three we came in for 15. You know, that's what this deck wants to be doing. But I don't think it's reliable enough at doing those things. I'm not sure the best way of... Doing it. So, in this version, the Stoneforge Mystics felt kind of slow, which is weird to say. Um, so maybe something like Steel Shaper's Gift instead of Stoneforge. But then we are getting a little bit lighter on creatures, but then again we do have the 8-0 drops now to sort of go through with that. And we have the Mishikos. So maybe if these were Steel Shaper's Gift, then we could cut the Cauldra complete as well. So we tried this with 4 Steel Shaper's Gift... And we've got a spare slot there. Maybe we also want some sort of interaction. The Nettle Cysts were just worse versions of Mishiko, in my opinion. <clears throat> so if we have a look, we're probably not... So we could probably cut... So we swap these four for Steel Shaper's Gift. And then these four become some sort of interaction. Like probably Swords to Plowshares. That's the most sensible one. But it could be Swords to Plowshares. Or it could be March of Otherworldly Light. It could be something like that. Just so we have some more interaction there. And I think that'll be a bit better. I, I don't understand necessarily why our mana base was so bad here. Like the Caracas did uh, help. and It did win us a game just by having Caracas. Which was nice. But it did leave us more exposed to waste time. We have a lot of planes in this deck. So we should have been able to keep our head above water. So we got 18 mana sources and four mock opals which are often going to be mana sources i know some people like to run paradise mantle in this deck uh, which is obviously quite good with the with all the zero drops we've got so maybe this could be like one paradise mantle three source to plowshares or something like that and then cut these for the steel shaver's gift because these like the Stoneforge Mystic felt so much slower than what we're doing because the way that this deck wins is by going fast and going under people. In a protracted game, it's not going to work. If you want to play a protracted game, you need to cut four of these for Mother of Runes. And that will give you a little bit of staying power on the board. Now, Mother of Runes is an interesting one because obviously it's going to help you uh, keep your guys around. But it's very rarely a creature that actually ever gets to attack on its own. So you have sort of one less creature. And these kind of all lean into the, the Mishigo's plan. I, I, I'm kind of tempted now to try and play some sort of affinity deck with Mishigo's in. Like um, like old school affinity. Playing like all the frog mites and things like that. Because at least those don't get cleaned up by meltdowns as easily. Obviously zero mana tutus effectively which is what frog mite is. Isn't very exciting. But if you have enough things like ravager and so on and like all probably probably not nettle cyst i don't know but maybe you can have nettle cyst in that deck as well and cranial planes and michigos that's a whole different deck but michigos looked nice to me today i enjoyed i enjoyed what this card had to offer and i think it works well in this deck where whereas nettle cyst is something you play for three mana which is a lot of mana in this deck and you sometimes even don't get to three mana and then you have to equip it to something. Like, yes, you can have Stoneforge Mystic to make it slightly cheaper, or you can have Sagada's Aid to make it easier to equip, or Pure Steel Paladin. But then 
it's not that impressive and you're kind of losing the mana you're paying for the body of that card. Whereas this Mystery Goes is cheaper. It's only two mana. It gets you the immediate hit of power to keep your aggression going. And you can force out some horrible blocks from your opponents like we did earlier. And it just can get you the win there and then, which is what you want. So for Nelsis to do the same as Mishiko's, you're going to have to have either a load of stuff and things are going great, or you're going to have to have five mana. Whereas this can just turn your sort of medium looking board, if they've like clipped away your Pure Steel Paladin or something like that, or Prismatic Ending your Cigar Aid, so you don't have the, the thing to really go for it. This can just come down and all of a sudden you've got six power on your turn or whatever and six power on the turn after then it flips and then you've got a giant better than Urza Saga token. It is white which is relevant for things like Mother of Runes but it's also not an artifact which is relevant for things like Meltdown. So yeah I'm not really sure where to go with the with the Hammer Time deck. I know the people that play it, um, Crusher I think is the main proponent of these had some pretty good runs on the old Magic Online. But I'm not really sure the best direction to go with this deck anymore. I think I'm sort of pulling in too many different directions, but I do think the Misha Goes is interesting tech. And hopefully somebody who's actually much better with the Hammer deck and has more reps and experience with it can see how they feel about that as a card. All right. Uh, oh, also, I just want to say about the sideboard here. I'm not convinced by the Ley Lines of Sanctity. Like in that storm matchup, yes, it was a different kind of storm matchup than like sort of your usual epic storm, epic gamble. But um, I think having a, a deafening science would have been better. I'm not sure which matchups I would want Leyline of Sanctity over Deafening Silence for. Like obviously, you know, there are things that are just going to go to your face, like burn or that weird sort of Valakut deck that I don't actually think is very good anyway. But I think for the most part, you're going to get a lot more joy out of Deafening Silence. So I think you probably would want a Deafening Silence here. Maybe three, maybe four. I don't know how many you want for that. But because it is an enchantment, it does power up your Mishikos, which is something to think about. All right. Uh, I think we've gone over this one enough for today. So before I sign off, let me just plug myself again and say, if you like watching Legacy content, I play quite a variety of things. So I'll play, you know some pretty janky stuff like this and sort of see where it goes and do some testing for everyone else to look at and go, oh, okay, this is good, this is bad, or whatever. But then I'll also play like good decks every now and then, you know, whether it's uh, like a proper cloud post list or, you know, when I play some painter decks or whatever. You know, I play a mixture of things. So there should be something for everyone. So if you know anyone who likes watching legacy content of any description, please send them my link because I need as many subscribers as I can. I would love to hit a thousand by New Year's, which is quite a big target, so I need your help to do that. All right, that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye.